mask, gloves, soap, scrubs, tick tock, grub, hub, twings, jocks, bears, cubs, zoom is the new club, six feet, no hugs, still beat these mugs, sick beat, cut a rug, Joe Exotic is a thug, kitty cat cat, tell me Carol Baskin, where is the husband, everyone's asking, stimulus check, everybody better cash in, mask and gloves, yeah that's the new fashion, girl, what did that girl just say, girl, <gasps> girl, I don't go to work, work. I don't leave, I stay. stay, I don't care, I eat, eat, eat and sleep all day, okay. and then I watch TV, yep. that's just the tea, hunty, yes, until they set us free, then I'ma let you be. Low test, 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 test. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, how are you? Just a second, I'm going to start my video here. Hi there. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Not too bad, thanks. What is loneliness? I define loneliness as a desire for intimacy. And when I say that, let me qualify that. I don't mean just sexual intimacy. I mean closeness to other people. So it's, it's a desire, it's a craving, a longing to be close to others. Loneliness has been a big part of my life for a long time. I, I moved away from home when I was 18 and I haven't lived in the same city as my family since then. Um, so it's something that I've just learned to live with. And yeah, I think it is something that is pretty frequently there. Or rather, I should say loneliness is always a possibility for me. It's, it's always possible that I could suddenly start feeling very lonely in, you know, having a nice productive day at home, feeling very good about myself. And then I sit down for 10 minutes and it floods over me. Sometimes when you go do something, you just end up wishing someone was there doing it with you. I think loneliness doesn't go away until you can feel connected while alone. I am the king of self-care days where I, you know, I go for dumplings in the AGO, but that's most successful on days when I'm feeling creative and confident and it's a lot less successful if it's in days where I'm really wishing I had a boyfriend. You know, as, as humans, we're hardwired for connection and just being around people can, you know, raise that kind of positive vibrations. If you're surrounded by good people or if you're, if you have that sense of belonging to a couple small groups or, you know, a couple close relationships, you're more likely to have a better outcome in general, a positive outcome and outlook and want to take care of your other side of your health. But also, I think it's sometimes it's it's even due to not even not even recognizing that maybe you're you're experiencing loneliness or anything like that too. <laughs> Hi friends. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? 
I'm I'm tired. I think like all the sunshine, like, and I was outside for a while with Lana, and maybe it's like we just haven't gotten so much sun in a while. Like I I'm tired. How about you? Where's Lana at? I don't see her. she makes me so happy don't hate me Lana. i know you're sleeping <laughs> i wonder if she remembers me of course she does but like through her screen she oh no she probably remembers your voice yeah this pandemic definitely uh, jump-started a lot of people into a trajectory of feeling alone because especially, you know, if people built their identity on things outside of themselves and things like hosting or going to events, things like, you know, and all those things are cut off. It's like, whoa, all right. So I'm like alone now without all these things. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting thing. At what point do you think loneliness becomes a problem? I would say loneliness is a problem right from the get-go. So what I would say is that if, if someone is experiencing solitude, that's the kind of friendlier, happier loneliness. When we're alone and, and enjoying being alone, we call it solitude. And I think people have varied needs for solitude. Some of us have more than others and, and are fine with that. Some people can't handle very much solitude at all. But for me, loneliness is, it's an unfulfilled desire. So it's, it causes suffering right away. What causes loneliness? Uh, a lot of things cause loneliness. Obviously, if it's a uh, craving that uh, we have for other people, then it's not having other people that causes loneliness. I feel more connected with my family and my closest friends, but interestingly, much less connected with an important part of community that are called weak ties. So the people you kind of know, um, but, but maybe you don't know their last name, uh, you see them every day at the coffee shop in line alongside you, or they're, they're always on the same subway car, the barista you go to, you know, the person whose who's commute matches yours. Those kinds of, of, of sort of incidental acquaintances who you're friendly with, um, but you don't know them well enough to call up on Zoom. You know, that's really been lost. It's been a year of really, for me, uh, focusing on my more immediate circle. And I think there is an erosion in the sense of community when you don't encounter all those people. Yesterday I went to Tim Hortons and I was, the barista was so nice and you know, like with your mask on, you can't really, you can see like they're smiling through their squints, but that's yeah. it. And I remember just leaving Tim Hortons and just like literally crying and feeling so much. I'm like, I really yeah. miss this. It's true. I, I hardly have gone anywhere, but I went to get new glasses just before the holidays. And I had a long conversation with the eyeglasses salesperson for the same reason it just was you know I was just I didn't realize how much I missed talking to strangers I never realized how much I loved people's like mouths like see, yeah. seeing people's like whole faces I never I never like realized how how much I love that and how how important that was in an interaction you know it's such a weird thing to take for granted too. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. That's why I'm like, I never had to think about that. Like, what, what do you mean? Like a whole a person's whole face? Like what, how, how else is, how else do you like interact with each other's your faces, right? But like, no, like, I guess like, cause who I am like this, right? It's like, ah, but then it's like. Yeah. It's so different. Yeah. <laughs> it's so different. I miss very much the, those, the socializations of, with other people and, and expressing, the, that's my work, that's what I do. The people my age, I'm, I'm 82 years old. So to a certain extent, we sort of feel we, meaning other, I would imagine other 80 year olds think the same way. You feel cheated because Let's face it, how many more years do you have? So every day that you don't do things that you actually want to do, 
you feel cheated about it and to no fault of your own. So you blame the virus for well play. But it's obviously is uh, it's not a very concrete way of thinking, but uh, but it's a, it's the this inner feelings that you have. And if you try, if you want to translate the loneliness or missing something, so, so be it. But uh, not lonely to, to the point where you sit in one room and you're physically alone all day. No. My son was with me for five days a week, and then he was with his dad two days a week for the first, I would say, two months. So I always had him with me most of the time. And then after two months, um, we went back to our regular schedule of half half. So there was a time where he was away for five days and I was by myself. And then when he came back in the car, when I picked him up and he was in the car and he, he started talking, I could feel his voice vibrating on my body. And that is something I realized when he talked and I could feel it on, like I could feel his presence. I realized I missed that a lot. Like this, the, I don't think we can create, recreate that online. There's many things like, hearing someone's voice <laughs> in real life you can't that's we need that i need that um being able to touch someone that's just like smell someone like people's smell is important um eye contact i can't do eye contact with this like you're looking somewhere i'm looking somewhere else that <laughs> is <laughs> i know right we have to look at the green light if we want to have eye contact um but but having said that i have made really close connections with people I've never met through Zoom. Um, and I call some, some of them, I call them some of my closest friends right now because I talk to them more than I talk to any of my other real life friends. Have you met them in real life or no? No, I haven't met them in real life. Oh my God. That's yeah, so I cool. know. Zoom is uh, every places to a certain extent, but not really. Some people, embrace the changes of technologies and they have the snack of the being understanding how it works and so on and others uh resist the idea and i'm in between the nature of the communication and the friendships that technology promotes is is more surface and less um it's, it's not as deep as you would get in a, a personal interaction. I, I do feel, and I see this in some of my students too, but I do feel that we're losing some of our uh, skills around that deep connection and we're losing some of our skills around helping others deal with issues like loneliness. I fear that we will even lose the recognition of what loneliness looks like. And I don't even mean just in others, but also in ourselves. What does that look like when you are constantly communicating? Because I think people have often associated loneliness with lack of communication, but that's not necessarily the case now. There could be lots of communication, but none of it is feeding what people need. If I had a button that I could push and technology would go away, would I push it? I honestly don't, I don't know. It's such a complex thing because I feel connected to many people because of the internet. And I'm trying to figure out what is it? When does it cross the line where I feel lonely? You know, because it's like such a f phenomenon that it's like simultaneously great and terrible for connection. I know I've had these transcendent experiences over Zoom where I've gone deeper with certain friends than I have ever gone in person. A very good friend of mine was kind enough to start leading Pilates classes via Zoom. She themed each class with, with different music. And one class, she used the soundtrack to Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Um, and uh, she kept relating the themes and the, like, the morals of that musical to our, like, 
Pilates journey, which was so funny. She would have us sort of sing along and, and goof off throughout it. And I remember doing like sit-ups or something during one of the songs and it, it just coming over me how I, I felt so, I didn't feel alone even though I was. I felt so connected with other people and so happy. I was like giddy. And in the end, we were singing Go, 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 Joseph and kind of doing like some hard cardio. And it just swept over me, this feeling of being like so connected with the other people on this Zoom call. Like I could almost feel like I was in the same room as them. And, you know, someone might argue that these virtual experiences aren't real or aren't authentic in some way, but it felt so significant and so real to be there, it made me feel so hopeful that even if we were never allowed to go outside again, that I would have that nourishment that you get from being around like-minded people experiencing happiness. I just, I felt delirious. And I don't know if that was also like the cardio, <laughs> but it was re a really powerful, memorable experience. Many people are going to their family doctor or nurse practitioner because they're lonely, not because they have some other medical need. What is social prescribing? Social prescribing means connecting people to programs and services that help address their social needs, whether that is social isolation and loneliness or something more material like housing or food. Um, but it's a direct and intentional clinical pathway from healthcare to those services. We're kind of seeing like what has been called the shadow pandemic. So we're seeing like, you know, increases in anxiety and depression and isolation. And so we are trying to be creative and find ways to support people. Primary care provider might probe a little bit and say like, this person is lonely and they really like music. Maybe a good referral might be to the talent optional music jam. One of our health promoters will receive that referral and we can say, here are some of our internal programs that relate to music. Here are some external programs that are offered in the communities. And it's also a follow-up call to that client. Here's what I was thinking based on what your provider shared with me. Is this, is this something that would interest you? And then they can kind of let us know what works for them and what doesn't work for them. And then we follow up a little later to say like, oh, were you able to make it to that music group? And what did you think? And like, if you didn't make it, like what stopped you and how can we support you? When this position came up at the health center, I really thought I want to have more of an upstream and proactive approach to helping people as opposed to this reactive downstream approach. Like why, you know, I'm, I'm tired of seeing people drowning in the water. I want to go up up the creek and find, find why are they falling in the water and let's fix that part right and then this isn't i'm not saying that social prescribing or or is a cure-all for everything in the system right but i think it's it is i think it is a, a move in the positive direction when someone goes to their nurse practitioner and I mean, I'm sure not a lot of people will just admit that they're lonely. How, how do the nurse practitioner know that they're lonely? There are some validated clinical scales that you can use to assess loneliness. One of them is called the UCLA uh, loneliness tool, and, and it will go through, um, you know, how many connections do you have? How regularly do you see people? Um, so it can assess your social isolation, as well as your sort of perceived sense of loneliness, like whether it bothers you that you have a limited number of connections and how it makes you feel and so on. So there are some pretty standard questions that you can ask that help get at that for people um, that don't force you to come right out and say, I'm feeling lonely today. What is the cure for loneliness? Connection. You the cure, I mean, a focus on connection, a focus on 
creating a sense of belonging, building an equitable society that really values inclusion, um, but also recognizing that this happens at multiple scales, that you need to feel that, you're, that your social group is included in the society as much as you need to feel that you individually are included in your neighborhood and in your world. It's, I think it's like an ever, it's like a, it's a constantly evolving kind of acquaintance that everybody sort of knows, you know, and like, as you grow, it kind of grows with you and it changes and maybe it like moves away for a while and you forget about loneliness and you're like, you don't think about it. And then all of a sudden one day it like hits you in the face. You're like, whoa, damn, that's right. I forgot about you, but here you are and here we are. And actually, I don't think you ever really left. I just like stopped. I like stopped paying attention to you for a while. It's, it's, um, yeah, loneliness. <laughs> What do I think is the cure to loneliness? Vodka? No. <laughs> um, I think that you can momentarily fill that void of loneliness by allowing yourself to be very open with somebody else. I also think that it's possible to feel very connected and not lonely while alone if you're really tapping into the connection you have with the world. So that could be connecting with nature, that could be connecting with a piece of literature or a sports team. You know, I, I think that a really beautiful thing to do when you feel lonely is to think about people you love and revisit some of your favorite memories with them. And to me, you're not alone when you do all that, right? You're living connected with uh, the world, with your own history. So I think those offer like fleeting opportunities to cure loneliness. Social isolation is a huge, um, it's a huge detriment to the human capacity, right? And the human, uh, a human being and that being lonely, like we should not be, have to be lonely. Like there's enough of us on this planet that no one should have to be lonely. Like we should be able to be socially connected to others. And I think it's important that we are.